Do you love everything about tennis? If so, this is the YouTube channel for you. Subscribe and check it out. Hi, welcome back to another video. This time I'm going to be talking a little bit more about the tactical side of the game and linking it to technique. So if you remember my last video was on three layers of technique. Uh, if you haven't seen that video, go to the channel and check it out. But layers two and three were applying your technique in a tactical context. And then the last one was about adapting your technique under extreme. So I have a video here of Cameron Norrie playing Davis Cup against Spain, against Vinolas. Okay, so I have added this little uh, stripe of red to highlight the distance between the two players. So you'll see if I go back a little bit here, the only shot that Cameron will play in the entire point to some sort of biomechanical model is his serve. So I'm not going to analyze the serve, but there's nothing stopping him doing what he wants to do mechanically on his serve. So he does that. You will see by ball three, the distance between him and Vinolis is pretty much the same as it was at the start. Uh, and then from there you will see, so if you have a look here, this shot here is probably, again it is an applied technique because he is coming off the ground and he's going from his left foot. Rotate, uh, pushing up from the leg and rotating so quick that he will come off the ground and land on the right foot. I would call that a jump forehand from one foot to the other. Okay, so then let's have a look and see roughly by shot four, they are still roughly the same distance apart. So they're very much in a rally phase or a neutral phase. You will see from here, Cameron then goes down the line changes direction let's see the impact it has yeah still pretty much the same distance let's have a look at the technique you'll see left foot open stance now that forehand did not have the same oh, not too much away from rotation but you'll see that the footwork used through the hitting phase was like a little shuffle step so not a jump, just a shuffle. Pretty good rotation to be fair. Yeah, and he goes line. But the effect is just a change of direction into the backhand. Not much difference in terms of distance. This is the interesting shot because you'll see here with Cameron getting tight on the baseline, you would perhaps expect an attack. Uh, you would be thinking that the ball might go into this area uh, down the line. But what he does is he goes back up the middle. Now it's a very deep shot, it's a, perhaps a good example of how the depth of the ball uh, isn't necessarily that impactful, especially on clay. Uh, let's have a look at the backhand. Because of the situation, you again you would think this is his, pretty much his conformed model. Step it, weight transfer in, rotation around, pretty standard backhand but the effect isn't that great. So you might, somebody might look at that backhand and think ta uh, technically that was a clean shot, but the bottom line is didn't really have that much of an impact because Vinolis on his forehand attacks. Now from this point onwards, you can see the gap has now increased between Vinolis and uh, Cameron. And you'll see from now on, Cameron is in a defensive phase and therefore the technique now the racket's going up behind the head because he, he's a little bit late on the ball and he wants a bit more height. Uh, you'll see from here, big time adaptation, fully open stance on a lunge. Racket is just really chopping the ball. Now look, 
Cameron has been very clever in kept the distance uh, as far apart from his opponent as he can. But you'll see Vinolas tight on the baseline. And a change. Look at this one. Watch the hand. There. Just pretty much hand. Yeah, so that is really adapting. Just using the hand or the wrist. Yeah. And then you'll see here, this is an interesting one, that Cameron, because he's in such desperate situation, bounce smash mid-court, you'll see here, normal split step timing would be that Cameron would be de-weighted as his opponent hits the ball, but he cannot wait. He has to anticipate. And he moves before. And on this one, because he's anticipated a little bit, it's still very much an adaptation, but you'll see... A little bit more with the arms rather than just the, the, the wrist. So it has a bit more of a punchy effect, but the bottom line is he's still in massive defense. And then you will see here, huge uh, adaptation of the wrist. Let's have a look at the wrist. Boom, 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 boom. Yeah, look how much it's moved there. Now, if I was critical, hypercritical of Vinolis, I would suggest that the position he's taken up on the screen here is not appropriate. He should be here because that is the bisection of the best two passes that Cameron could play in that situation. Uh, and quite a lot of people think that you should be following the ball. But when you're in the midcourt, the centre is pretty much the T. And if you look at where that ball passes there, that he would have got that ball easily with one step if he had been in that position. So all he needed to do was, after he hits this ball, boom, he needed to take the step across to the middle rather than actually going straight towards the, the, the ball. But that has been hypercritical. So now that you've seen that, have a look and see Amazing. the point again. Check out the turning point of the backhand, so it's neutral phase, neutral phase. You think it might be an attack, but it's kind of deep up the middle, a bit of a push. And then he's in adaptation pretty much for the rest of the point. Great tactical positioning. Great anticipation. Unbelievable tenacity. Huge skill at the end of the run. So pretty spectacular debut from Cameron. The, the main point from this video is really to highlight how the tactical and the technical uh, overlap together. Of course, have a good model of biomechanical. When I say conform, some people thought I meant uh, it had to kind of look pretty. I mean, in biomechanically, it has to conform uh, to this, the principles that we would use. So uh, hopefully get something, a little bit more of an insight into how I would think about tactics and technique from that video. I'm going to start posting a lot more things like this because I love the tactical side of the game uh, and we can use the top players to analyse them to death. So check it out, subscribe to the channel and uh, make sure that you like and comment underneath and ask any questions you want and I will produce more videos just for you. Okay, until then, laters.